Hi, this is Brian Oliver. Welcome to part three of our Coherence 12 on 2 configuration enhancement series. Uh, in this part, we're going to talk about starting to create our own custom configuration namespace. This follows on from part parts uh, one and two, obviously. Uh, part two, in particular, we started demonstrating the use of a configuration namespace. In this part, we're going to actually create one. So let's look at the briefly what parts we're going to look at today. Like any new example, we really should create a hello world. So the, the example configuration we're going to create today is exactly that, hello world. Through this process, we're going to step through the parts of the con new configuration framework we have to use, together with parts of the coherence cache configuration model. Importantly, areas of Javadoc that you should be aware of. So let's get started. What would our first custom configuration namespace look like? Well, let's do something simple. We want to create a hello world. So to do this, this is how it might work. We have a new namespace called hello world, and that would be implemented using our hello world namespace handler. Next, somewhere in our cache configuration, we're going to use our namespace. And in this case, we're going to create a greeting element and being Australian we're going to say g'day. Now it's actually pretty easy to write one of these. There are really just four steps. First step is to create ourselves a namespace handler. We sort of mentioned this already. There are a few ways to do this. The most important way and probably the easiest way is just to extend the abstract namespace handler that's provided by Coherence. In fact Coherence itself uses this for its configuration. Alternatively, you could implement the namespace handler interface. But this requires a lot of extra work. So sticking with extending abstract namespace handler is a good, good way to start. The second thing was really optional, and that is to create an XSD for our namespace. We're not going to do it in this example, but if you look at the source code for our spring namespace handler, you can see that's what we've done there. The third step is really to create content processes for the different types of content we have in our namespace. There are many ways to do this using the new framework. We're going to show you a very simple way to get started. Lastly, we can talk about leveraging coherence lifecycle events. In reality, this is an entire talk in itself, and so we'll cover most of this in part four. So let's look at the basic Hello World namespace handle implementation. It's fairly easy. As I said, we should just be able to extend the abstract namespace handler. And for most things in, the, in Coherence 1212, there's a lot of lifecycle events. So when the namespace is first seen inside the XML document, the configuration framework will actually call on start namespace for us, providing us with a context which we can use for processing other XML, the XML element in which our namespace was defined, the prefix that was used for our namespace, in, in this case we used hello world, and the URI that was used to define the namespace. The URI is important because we may actually want to provide other parameters to our namespace handler, and this can be done through the URI. As we're extending a class, we really should call super here to make sure our super class is actually in, uh, correctly initialized. But in reality, the abstract namespace handler doesn't have a, an implementation. It's quite clean. So this really has no effect. But we do it here just for good practice. And then once our namespace is actually started or encountered in, inside our configuration, then what we'll do is actually just print out hello world to say that the namespace was started. So that's the start, but what about our hello world greeting element? Well, let's think about how this works. The coherence, coherence configuration framework actually delegates all of the XML content processing to what we call content processes that are provided by the namespace handler. So in order to really process the hello world greeting element and the content that's associated with that element, we really need to define some sort of XML content processor and have that provided by our namespace. It sounds quite complicated, but one of the things that our abstract namespace handler does is actually simplifies this process quite dramatically. So it's quite simple. We can declare an inner class, in this case saying, uh, and we can annotate our class saying, look, this is really for the simple, um, an XML simple name for an element called greeting. Notice that we don't have the uh, hello world prefix here. 
because really the prefix that's a name for a namespace is up to the developer, the end user. So we don't know at this point what the prefix really is. But we do know that the element, the local name or the simple name, is called greeting. So we're defining a greeting processor and it's going to implement element processor. So this is an XML element processor. There's also attribute processors. Now each element processor is responsible for processing some XML element and returning some value. Now in this case, our greeting is not going to return any value. We're just going to print stuff to the screen. So uh, the return type here is going to be void. Next we just have to implement one method and this is the callback that occurs when our greeting element is seen in our document. In this case the processing contact is again provided to us together with the element and perhaps during the processing of this uh, XML element a configuration exception occurs in which case we can throw a configuration exception. But in our case we simply want to print to the screen what the greeting was as it was encountered in the XML file and obviously we're not returning anything so we can return null. So this is really the entire namespace handler defined for Hello World. So one of the things that you'll see about the abstract namespace handler is it provides a bunch of helpful functions. Firstly, it's really like auto discovery of all the XML content processes based on annotations. You can define these manually through explicit calls on, on the abstract namespace handler, but in most cases, doing things through auto discovery is way cleaner. Uh, as mentioned before, the configuration framework actually asks the namespace handlers for the content processes. So the abstract namespace handler actually internally tracks all of the ones it finds and all the ones that are registered through explicit calls. Additionally, the abstract namespace handler provides default behavior for what to do if it encounters unknown content in a namespace. Now, there are a bunch of other things that the abstract namespace handler together with the processing context can do, but these will be covered in later talks. So the abstract namespace handler class really just has several methods, and these are just provided here for reference. But let's actually look at our hello world in action. So let's run our hello world as a server. So this is a standard default cache server that's using our hello world example our hello world configuration example. And as you can see here, we started a, con a coherence 12.1.2 ca default cache server. And when our namespace was encountered, we output the hello world namespace. Additionally, when it saw the greeting, it actually output the greeting. I noticed coherence ca happily continued on and started our server. And this was the configuration file that we used, as in the example. We defined our Hello World namespace handler, and we defined using the actual namespace. Now it's important to note, Coherence since around Coherent version 3.7 has actually supported or allowing foreign elements inside the, X, inside the XML. And this was actually set up in preparation to allow for this type of support. So it's important to actually understand what the underlying cache framework and the cache configuration framework is doing. And one way to do this is to think about, well, what does the actual content producers do and, and how are they used? Well, essentially what happens is as the configuration framework processes and steps through the XML content, it asks the namespace handlers for appropriate processes to produce that, to parse in that content. As it parses that content, each of those content handlers is responsible for processing and producing a specific type of value. Now in our case, we told it not to produce a value, hence the use of void, but it could actually produce something that was rather more interesting. So for example, the cache config element processor that's defined as part of the coherence cache config namespace actually produces a cache config object, as the same happens with things like class scheme. Class scheme actually produces a class scheme object. Distributed scheme actually produces a distributed scheme object. So there's actually a one-to-one -one relationship pretty much now between all of the elements and fundamentally runtime configuration models for each of these coherence concepts. So to think about this, 
what namespace handlers really do is just define these processes. And then there are a number of different types of processes. Element processes are for handling XML elements. Attribute processes are for handling actually attribute processes. And there's a whole bunch of them already defined. And this is what Coherence 1212 actually does itself. So there are some important packages that are new to Coherence 1212. In the com tengasol coherence config package, this defines essentially the entire runtime cache configuration model for coherence. It also defines the coherence cache configuration namespace handler, together with all the element and attribute processes. These are all publicly defined. It also defines classes that are produced by these processes. And being public to define means we can take advantage of them and, and or override them. The other package that's quite important is the com tangasol config package. This package actually defines the configuration framework itself. This is really the core framework that Coherence uses to process XML documents. It's really not Coherence specific and it can be used, used in really any, any purpose. And it's this framework plus the, co the Coherence config framework that together allow you to extend Coherence. So in summary, Coherence 12 on 2 introduces the notion of custom namespace configurations. This is now a native supported feature of Coherence. While we used to have this capability through extensions in the Coherence incubator, now it's part of 12 on 2. This really simply allows better integration with third party frameworks as we talked about in, in part one of this series. It shows you how you can do independent development of extensions. Okay, our hello world wasn't really an extension, but you can see how coherence can easily you can add features into coherence through these namespaces. We mean we really mean that these can be developed independently. And the, a good example is the Spring namespace handler, which is developed in an open store source style outside of the coherence core product. This is very helpful because it means we can add new extensions to coherence without changing coherence itself. And lastly, it allows complete customization of coherence. So what are we going to look at in the next part? In the next part of this series, we're going, to, we're going to look at developing something a little more useful than Hello World. We're going to develop a cron service. And we're going to use custom namespaces. We're going to go back and leverage some of the configuration framework. We're going to introduce more parts, some additional features in this framework. We'll start to touch on the configuration model and something new, the configuration life cycle. How to take advantage of the changes inside coherence cache servers and servers and clients to leverage those events to control, say for example, cron in this instance. Thanks for joining us.